Although historical sources differ somewhat as to details, they are remarkably consistent regarding the fundamental facts concerning the Essenes of Palestine during the era that encompasses the lifetime of Jesus. The noted Jewish historian Josephus informs us that Jews at that time belonged to one of three major sects, the Pharisees, Sadducees, or Essenes. His writings suggest that the Essenes believed in communication with angels. The white-robed adherents of this reclusive sect practiced communal ownership of property. Much time was spent studying and copying Jewish texts that prophesied the end of days. Josephus also states that the Essenes believed in predestination. They acknowledged the immortality of the soul and held to a doctrine of pre-existence consistent with the concept of reincarnation. Apparently, many Essenes were devoted to celibacy, though Josephus mentions a group who married and raised children. Philo of Alexandria concurred with Josephus regarding the Essenes' communal ownership of property and belief in the immortality of the soul. With the sparse historical evidence provided by the Jewish historians, the Essenes were merely a footnote in history until a Palestinian shepherd discovered some old manuscripts in clay jars in a cave along the shores of the Dead Sea. The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls several decades ago thrust the Essenes of old into the forefront of modern biblical scholarship. Since the discovery of the first scrolls in 1947, archaeologists have found fragments of manuscripts in 11 different caves and the remains of a settlement known as Qumran. Scholars believe that most of the scrolls were probably written in the century before the birth of Jesus. The manuscripts contain three distinct types of information. There are copies of Hebrew scriptures, there are also commentaries on these books of the Bible. The third type of material provides insight into the daily life of the community. The Dead Sea Scrolls are widely recognized as having been produced by the Essenes living at Qumran, as documented in the historical sources that we have reviewed. The scrolls portray a group set apart from the Orthodox Jews at the temple in Jerusalem. They were focused on biblical prophecy and its imminent fulfillment. Based on the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Essenes at Qumran believe that God's new kingdom on earth is brought about by the coming of a Messiah or king in addition to a great priest or prophet. The Manual of Discipline Scroll focuses on rules for living within the community. This manuscript reveals an isolated, self-sufficient group strictly maintained by a board of governors. Another of the fascinating manuscripts found at Qumran is known as the War Scroll that describes a confrontation between the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness. However, the Dead Sea Scrolls do present some paradoxes for scholars. For example, the Qumran Essenes profess a strong adherence to Mosaic law and Jewish traditions while claiming to be true or pure in carrying out these traditions. Yet there are hints of influences from Persia and Egypt. The conflict between the Sons of Darkness and Sons of Light in the War Scroll strongly resembles the dualistic concepts of Zoroastrianism, perhaps suggesting a Persian influence possibly from the time of exile when the Jews were taken to Babylon. In fact, one of the major hypotheses about the source of the Essenes is the Babylonian origin theory, based on the so-called Damascus document found among the scrolls. Furthermore, the clay jars that contain the scrolls are distinctive and Egyptian in style, suggesting possible contact with Egyptian influences. Curiously, the first scroll associated with the Qumran community was discovered in an Egyptian synagogue in 1897, 50 years before the discoveries in the caves at Qumran. While studies continue and scholars debate these complex issues, there is wide agreement that the scrolls provide a glimpse into the Judaism into which Jesus was born. 
They confirm the diverse religious and cultural environment documented by Josephus and the other historians of that time. They depict a group that has set itself apart, a righteous group actively preparing to fulfill the prophecies of old, while preserving the sacred text and traditions from the past. Based on the study of the scrolls and related resources, some scholars have suggested that Jesus and John the Baptist were affiliated in some manner with the Essenes, a concept that we will explore in the next section. In describing the religious and cultural environment of Palestine at the time of Jesus, Edgar Cayce often explained that there were various groups, each with their own agendas. Casey's readings concur with historical sources that the Essenes were one of the three main Jewish groups, along with the Pharisees and Sadducees. There were also the culturally diverse Samaritans, the Greek and Roman occupiers, and splinter groups such as the Zealots, who sought to overthrow the occupiers. Even within the Essene group, there was significant diversity. Casey compared the various Essene subgroups to the denominations within modern Protestant Christianity. One of the key issues that divided some of the Essenes was predestination. One major faction of Essenes believed that things can happen on their own, apart from God's will. Another group, consistent with the writings of Josephus, believed that God is in complete control and makes everything happen according to His will. According to Casey, the factions within the Essene movement included both Jews and Gentiles as members. This cultural diversity, in part due to assimilations during the exile of Jews in Persia, led to a broader metaphysical perspective. Thus the Essenes, as a whole, tended more toward universality of application of the tenets and teachings during that period. In practice, Essenes cherished not only the customs, laws, and Jewish oral traditions, but had kept records of those periods when individuals had supernatural or out-of-ordinary experiences. These included dreams, visions, voices, and other psychic or mystical phenomena, and the interpretations of those responsible for preserving such records. This is in contrast to other Jewish groups, such as the Sadducees, who only accepted the laws in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible given by Moses. Although the community at Qumran is not specifically mentioned, centers or schools at other locations are discussed in Casey's readings. One of the Essene schools was between Bethany, Galilee, and Jerusalem on the way above Emmaus. It was run much as a Catholic school, with an officer functioning like a sister superior. The other prominent Essene center, mentioned frequently by Casey, was at Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel is located along the northwest coast of Israel, near the modern city of Haifa. The biblical significance of Mount Carmel is that it is associated with important prophets, Casey's readings state that the Essene Center at Mount Carmel was descended from this biblical school of prophets. The Essenes at Mount Carmel dedicated their lives, their minds, their bodies to a purpose, to a seeking for that which had been to them a promise of old, the coming of a Messiah. These Mount Carmel Essenes felt the severe persecution by the Sadducees, who denied the reality of reincarnation or as the Sadducees put it, resurrection of the dead. The use of astrology, numerology, and phrenology was also problematic for these Essenes who tended to keep a low profile, at times bordering on secrecy. Casey's readings observed that the Essenes were aware of the procession of the equinoxes and the astrological change to a new cycle the Piscean Age associated with the coming of the Messiah. The Casey depiction of the Essene group at Mount Carmel is rich in history and details. The school of prophets established by Elijah and Mount Carmel 
had been in steep decline in the decades before the birth of Jesus. There was only a small remnant of believers left. The school was becoming depleted. An elderly couple named Phineas and Elkotma made a covenant with the Lord. If they could have a child, they pledged to dedicate it to the regeneration of the school of prophets. When Elkotma became pregnant, there was tremendous hope among the Essenes in that region for the restoration of the school at Mount Carmel. 24 years before the birth of Jesus, their prayers were answered. To this dedicated couple was born a daughter, whom they named Judy. With the expectation that a male leader would be born, there was disappointment and confusion in the minds of many involved in this reclusive community. Yet the parents fulfilled their promise and dedicated the child to the study and application of those teachings and tenets of the Essene traditions. Much of the tradition being preserved by the Essenes came from experiences during exile in Persia in combination with other distant lands. Thus the traditions of Egypt, India, Persia, and other peoples became part of the studies of Judy, which she would seek to keep and preserve. In one reading, Casey calls Judy the keeper of the records of the Essenes. Judy matured into a teacher, healer, and prophetess at Mount Carmel, eventually becoming the leader of that group. The 20th century woman, who had the past life as Judy, asked Casey why Judy was not a boy as expected. Casey replied that it was for the demonstration of woman's place in the affairs and associations of man. This trend carried on in the teachings of both John the Baptist and Jesus. Thus, Judy became a role model for women within the Essene movement, which influenced the early Christian church. The Essenes at Mount Carmel were distinctive in at least three significant ways. Both women and men were leaders. Membership included rich cultural diversity with links to non-Jewish groups outside of Palestine. And religious and educational practices included esoteric studies such as astrology and psychic development. A Syrophoenician prophetess and teacher named Zermata embodied all three of these distinctive traits. Casey describes Zermata as a prophetess, astrologer, meditator, and dream interpreter. Her Syrophoenician cultural heritage exposed her to Persian esoteric studies that she utilized as a counselor, guide, and teacher to the Essenes. She composed music and poetry to communicate her metaphysical insights. Utilizing her studies and psychic abilities, she recognized that a Messiah was to be born in Judea. Her travels led her to Mount Carmel, where she took up residence and developed a close working relationship with the Essene leader, Judy. Sermata did not forfeit her leadership role among her own people, but provided a vital link between the Carmel Essenes and distant lands to the east. In a sense, she was an early forerunner of the wise men, who would later come when the signs and records concerning the coming Messiah were fulfilled. With the political turmoils that accompanied the coming of John and Jesus, this wise woman moved around a great deal, attending secret meetings with Judy and other Essene leaders from time to time. The 20th century woman, who Casey identified as Armada, asked Casey to explain a frequent vision she experienced wherein she saw herself with Judy on a high tower or battlement, looking out over what seemed to be a desert land. Judy was wearing a headdress with her robe while Zermata wore only her robe. Casey explained that this was a valid remembrance of an experience where she counseled with Judy during her past life in Palestine. The difference in clothing was due to the differences in customs between the cultural groups to which they belonged. Zermata lived to be nearly 90 years old, passing away while in transit to Mount Carmel. In choosing to focus on the lives of Judy and Zermata, I am not necessarily suggesting that the Essene movement was led by women. Rather, 
that the role of women within the Essene movement may have changed drastically a couple of decades before the birth of Jesus. It is interesting and probably relevant that these two individuals received readings with so much depth and clarity, especially since this perspective is at variance with both historical and archaeological findings. Such dramatic change would herald the expectancy of a new age as the rejuvenated school of prophets at Mount Carmel made preparations for the coming of the Messiah.